In this video, we're going to go over a little more on using a pillar with salt. I got several emails asking for me to expand on it and do another example of how to use pillar and also do a little more on creating some salt states and intermingling the two. So in this video, I'm going to expand on using a pillar to make it a little more complex and we're going to do that using Nginx. So the first thing that we need to do is we're going to go into our top.sls and our salt directory and just go ahead and add nginx. Then we're going to use our init.sls in our nginx folder in salt and we're going to start out doing our salt state. We'll start with nginx. We want the package to be installed. We want the service running. We want it to be able to reload whenever something we're watching is changed. We want to enable it to start on boot. And then what we're going to watch is the default file in sites available and in sites enabled. This is the place in Ubuntu where you actually put these files. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we want the default file in sites available to be managed by salt. And the source of that file is going to be a Jinja file that we have in our project. So we're going to set the template to Jinja. We're going to pass it in a context. And the name of that context, basically the key of that is going to be site and the data is going to be default for now. Then we're going to require that the package Nginx is going to be installed to guarantee that Nginx is installed first. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at our sites enabled default and we're going to make sure it has a symlink to our sites available default and the target is sites available slash default. This will go ahead and create a symlink of the default Nginx configuration to the sites enabled. This makes sure that the default configuration is enabled on our server. So going back to our site.jinja file, we'll go ahead and open that up. And as you notice, it's using Jinja and it's just outputting site to this file. In this case, it would just go ahead and write default in. We're going to expand this a little more here in a little bit, but this kind of is a start. So without actually creating our pillar file yet, let's actually go ahead and fill in some of the Jinja templating that we're going to use first, and then we'll go back and do our pillar nginx.sls file to fill in the gaps. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to loop over however many sites that we might have doing a foresight in sites. And then we'll actually replace default with site in both our files that we're going to watch. So if we have a bunch of sites listed in our nginx.sls file, then this will basically generate out, hey, for every site in our nginx, in our nginx pillar, then we want to watch in for any changes in, that take place and go ahead and reload the service if that happens. We're also going to want to do that for our managed files as well. So we're going to loop over all of these sites in our nginx pillar file and then for each of those we're going to make sure that there is a file in, def in sites available and that there is a symlink to it in sites enabled. And then we're going to also pass in that site data, the basically the name of the site that's going to happen in our site context to our site.jinja file. Some of this might be a little confusing, but when you actually see it in action here in a little bit, it'll make a lot more sense. What we're doing is we're watching for any of the configuration files in site available or site enabled at the top there, and then we're reloading Nginx if any of those change. So in our pillar, if we add more configuration to a file, then it'll go ahead and reload Nginx for us. And then if we have a bunch of configuration files ready to go for our sites, for all of our sites, then it'll go ahead and populate those on our server as well. And we have a very generic configuration setting for our state. This could actually manage a hundred different sites if you wanted, or a thousand different sites if you wanted. With these few lines of code, all you have to do is properly edit your pillar, your Nginx pillar that we're going to set up. So if we go ahead and take a look at our pillar.nginx.sls file, we can get started with that. Our top level is going to be nginx. We're going to create a list of all of our sites. In this case, we're just going to use gojango.com as the example. And we, this is where we would add a potentially whole bunch of websites. In this case, we're just going to worry about one, and that's gojango.com. Next thing that we're going to do 
is we're actually going to add a dictionary inside of this of gojango.com as the key. And then we're gonna add this pipe so we can do a freeform text below as long as the indentation is right for our Nginx config. And for this example, we're gonna just do upstream gunicorn set our server localhost to 8001. This is kind of what you would have in a base gunicorn configuration. And this is all we're gonna have for example purposes. We're not gonna go ahead and fill out the rest, but we could go ahead and add a location slash block and add, you know, like server name things of that things of that sort and then link it to our gunicorn upstream here this is where you would actually put all of those and then we might go under here and do buddylindsay.com or under that and then under that do wordpress.com or something you know whatever site that we're hosting and we want that nginx config to be in place and then we would also have to make sure that our sites up at the top would have in this case, buddylindsay.com and wordpress.com in there as well. With that in mind, we have a little bit more configuration. If you remember back when we did our site.genja file, all we did was say, hey, we want to do the site name. Well, with the site name only, it's just going to put gojango.com in a file, and we're going to be like, what? What just happened? Why isn't our configuration there? If we open up our site.genja file, we need to modify this to actually get the information out of our pillar. So we'll just do pillar nginx to get our nginx configuration, and then just set site because it's gonna use that data inside of that dictionary inside of this file. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna write out the upstream gunicorn in this file on our server. And I'll show you that here once we do our high state. So then we need to add nginx to our top.sls file in our pillar so that it actually runs and is used. And then finally we did all that configuration in our init.sls, but we need to go ahead and reference the pillar file inside of that so it all works. So we're gonna set sites to our pillar. We're gonna get nginx, and then we're also going to get sites inside of that or just use default if nothing is available. And that's it. That's it for using our pillar, making it a little more dynamic on our Nginx assault state. And with that, let's go ahead and give it a run. We'll do our sudo salt web01 state dot high state. And that's gonna run. In this case, we get a little bit of a message and then it just finishes. So let's go ahead and jump over to our server and take a look do a list of our sites enabled and we get gojango.com in default and both are linking over to sites available gojango.com is what we configured default was already there like that then let's actually go ahead and look at the file in sites available at gojango.com and see we have our upstream gunicorn that we put in our nginx.sls file inside of our pillar and then finally if we look at all our processes and look for nginx we see that Nginx is running with several worker processes. And with that, that's it. That's, that's a little more expounding on the pillar, and I hope that helps make, make a little more sense and shows you some more examples of how to do some salt states and using pillar together with those. So that actually pushes back to our next video, which is going to be our deployment process with using salt. With that, I'm going to quickly run through all of the salt states to make that happen, and then run through the main salt state, which is going to actually do our production push. But that's all be in the next video. I hope you have enjoyed this one and you have gotten a lot out of it. Please take a look at salt, and I really recommend using a configuration management system similar to salt because it will make administration of your servers so much more easy and save you a lot of time down the road.